All right. Um, yeah, I'll just open it up for questions. Um, yeah, no, I mean, look, it, it was pretty much kind of, you know, as I looked at it, um, you know, obviously, look, we won a game in, you know, in our league by, you know, three touchdowns. So, um, it, it obviously wasn't, wasn't all bad. There were some things that we, we've got to, you know, improve on. I do think there's still some things that like have stood out to me, like our red zone offense has been much better the last two weeks. I think we're, um, seven out of our last eight in terms of being able to score, you know, touchdowns in the red area. I think that's uh, improved. Um, you know, I thought our I thought our pass defense was was really good in the game. Um, and I thought, you know, from the standpoint of just being able to win the field position battle, I thought that was a huge uh, factor in the game. I mean, our starting field position ended up being the 43 yard line. Theirs was the 23 yard line. Um, so we played a significant portion of the game on their end of the field. Um, and uh, now, you know, I think still third down has to be better, really on both sides of the ball. I think that was a contributing factor to us kind of losing the time of possession battle. Um, a lot of those third downs, you know, particularly on defense, um, came on third and short, which is where we, you know, we, we actually had been – you know, pretty good in that area, but we didn't stop them on third and one. I think they were five of five, you know, on third and one. And so they were able to keep some drives away, you know, keep some drives alive that way. Um, you know, overall defensively, I thought, you know, they were 3.8 yards per per offensive play. So uh, the problem was they had, you know, too many, too many plays and we didn't have enough plays. And I think third down was a big factor in that. No, last night was too early to ask you about Zach Bond, so I wanted to ask again. Uh, now that you've gotten to see the film, how did he grade out with what felt like a more focused? Player? Yeah, look, I, yeah, I mean, um, that was kind of the, the the plan. You know, was to focusing more on, uh, you know, being a rusher. Um, I think he's been effective in that role. Um, I think there's some times where he's gotten back there, got the quarterback off the spot, and then some things that don't really even show up. That's something that we've kind of lacked a little bit is when we do get the quarterback off the spot and the quarterback does get outside the pocket, you know, he's got the speed and athleticism to, you know, force the throw away rather than, you know, it end up being a quarterback scramble or, or something of that nature. So um, I just think having a little bit more athleticism, um, I think it's been beneficial for us in terms of, you know, trying to be able to rush the passer. You didn't feel comfortable last night saying that, you know, there was a possibility or a great possibility that we would see more of sort of the pass rushing role from him moving forward. Is there a reason that he didn't fit into that role before? Um, well, look, I mean, I think his linebacker snaps have become a little bit more limited, and so that opens him up a little bit more to uh, to that pass rushing role. Um, you know, I, I don't see him as a full-time defensive end, um, you know, because I just think from a size standpoint that that's difficult to do at that size. Um, you know, play a full-time uh, defensive end position, particularly in the run game, things like that. So, um, you know, when you get teams into a little bit more of a passing situation, there's a there's a bigger role for that player. And is that why you feel that the linebacker snaps has become more limited? Is that you mentioned that? Is that well, look, I think some of that has to do with I thought Nephi Sewell came in and played really well last week, and I think he earned more opportunities to play the linebacker position. Now, they they played the whole game in you know in, in sub. Sub offense, which limited our, you know, ability to get Nephi uh, in there a little bit more. But um, I think you'll see Nephi, you know, probably play a little bit more, um, you know, in our regular packages with, with, uh, you know, when they get into, you know, 12, 21, those type of personnel groupings. How much of that too is you guys are maybe looking for a solution to spark that pass rush and? Uh, keep well, I think there's, I, I think that's part of it, right? I mean, you know. Um, you know, we, we kind of went through a significant portion of the season, and 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 you know that well. We're not getting to the quarterback as much as we need to, um, and yet we've had some some spurts through you know throughout my time here where we you know haven't sacked the quarterback as well, and then all of a sudden we have a few of those breakout type games. So, um, but that yeah, that's that's part of it. Is you know we feel like we've got to affect the quarterback more. Um, I feel like we've 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 kind of been able to do that. Uh, we did that, you know, in this past game, and 
don't know that our sack numbers were where you know you would have liked for them to be against Detroit, but I do think there was some you know a little bit more effect on the passer in terms of the rush. And it's, uh, it looked like Brian Brzee kind of shook up on that last defensive play of the game. Is there? Yeah, look, I mean, um, kind of hurt his shoulder, but everything really checked out fine. So, um, you know, based on the information that I have today from the trainers, we don't really think that's going to be an issue. Was Groupie's leg bothering him? Not just the field goal, but his kickoffs didn't seem to be as deep as Well, it, look, that's that's been something that he's been dealing with the last – you know, a couple of weeks, and it's limited his, um, you know, his ability on on kickoffs a little bit. Um, so, I, but I, I think that's going to continue to get better. I know we asked this after the game, but uh, reviewing it and, and talking with Derek after and how he felt, I mean, did he feel limited physically in any way? Yeah, look, I, I he certainly wasn't, you know, in my mind, a hundred percent. But he was, he was more than healthy enough to go out there and, and play. Um, and, you know, it wasn't our best, wasn't his best performance, it wasn't our best performance offensively. Um, so we've got to make some corrections. And um, fortunately, we get to do that off a win. And, and now we get ready for New York. Um, I know last night you, know, you, you, you were asked about Jimmy Graham. You said you don't want to dwell on the past. But, but when he has three touchdowns on five targets. I mean, what is the explanation for what you haven't seen from him to give him more well, than five look, targets? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, the, the number of snaps uh, that, that, that he's played is, has been limited, uh, even in the last couple of games. The one thing that we feel like, man, there, there's an area of the field that we feel like this player can help us. Um, and that's in the red area. And, and he's done that the last couple of weeks. And um, you know, but there's a, there's a lot of other snaps that go along in the game other than just the other than just the red area. So um, I think we got to continue to look at that balance. But I think he's, you know, I, I, I think he's earned the right to, you know, get some more snaps. And what, what, you know, while being fair to the player, I mean, is he not an effective enough blocker? Is is the, the you know speed when there's a lot of field in front yeah. of him to run deeper? Run yeah, look, I mean, keeps him off the field? you know, I. Well, I think we we've got you know some players in, at that position that have kind of defined roles and things that they can do, um, and and really it's kind of ends up being about opportunities. Jimmy's gone out the last couple of weeks and had gotten more opportunities. He's taken advantage of those opportunities. So when you do that, I think you should get more. So I think that's what we'll we'll look at as we move forward. Not to fully reprise the Derek Carr and Eric McCoy thing, but just so that it's it's addressed. Was there any additional conversation that has taken place between you and either player or the team? In yeah, that? yeah. Um, we'll keep those you know conversations in house. But yeah, I think that whole thing's been addressed, and um, I think it's time to move forward from there. Fair to say that everything, not to not to pander for the details or, or, or hamper for the details, but fair to say that it was come away in a positive. We're in a good spot moving them. forward. Yeah. With Blake's missed kick, or was it just the leg that you mentioned before? Or what did you see on kind of the mess? Well, look, I don't think I don't think the whole operation was very good. I mean, snap, hold, kick. I, I thought it, all of it was was not was not very good. So um, I think all three elements had had a part in um, in that in that kick not going through. And um, look, that's I mean, you get. A, you get a field goal of that of that distance inside of what it is for an extra point, you know that's that's really inexcusable. So we've got to be better there. He's missed another one inside there at that same distance as well. I know you stress patience with a guy like that, but when it's that close, like does that change the patience factor? Listen, I mean he understands that he needs to kick the ball through the through the uprights. I think we all know that. Um, I think he's a really talented young kicker. Um, Sometimes with young players at, at any position, you're going to have some ups and downs. Um, I've seen a number of kickers in our league that have had early struggles uh, that are extremely talented and gone on to have exceptional careers. So um, we're going to let him fight through some of these struggles a little bit. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, he'll continue to get better and we'll have some more consistency. Obviously, the season doesn't have, like, the nice, clean, even quarters anymore. but. Last quarter of the season now, would 
we typically want to see out of the football team uh, during the home stretch? Yeah, look, I mean, our, our mindset last week was, you know, going 1-0 and, and and just focusing on Carolina and winning a game at home against Carolina. That was our focus last week. Our focus this week is going to be on the New York Giants and trying to win that game at home. And we're not going to look too far into the future about anything else. We're going to focus on the task at hand um, and, and uh, you know, try to get, try to, you know, go to the dome and get another win. You missed some two starters in the secondary, and it looked like a lot of guys had good coverage yesterday. Just talk about that unit. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I thought our pass defense was awesome in the game. I thought our guys got up and challenged. Um, you know, there's a couple of plays, obviously, that we'd all like to have back. Um, but I thought for the most part, there's a lot of contested throws. Um, and and I thought I thought our guys, you know, got up and, and, and competed against them and challenged them at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, I think those, you know, when you're able to get a little bit of pressure on the quarterback and you're able to challenge at the line of scrimmage, it, it leads to some pretty good, uh, pretty good results. Um, you know, we had a number of, you know, uh, opportunities on the ball, you know. Uh, I do think there was probably a couple opportunities I thought maybe we could have taken advantage of and turned into interceptions, but uh, I thought overall the pass defense was really good. Dennis, can you speak to their ability just to, to make plays on the ball? I think you got three guys in the top 20 in the NFL right now in passive defense, and, I, and one of them is Yada, who hasn't played a ton this year. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, look, I think that, you know, really has been a position that we've had some depth at. Um, and um, Ike's come in and done a really good job when he's been called upon to, to go in and play. And, um, you know, for you to be able to make plays on the ball, you have to put yourself in position, you know, to make plays on the ball. And I think, you know, I think the style that our guys play, it's an aggressive kind of get up on you type of style. And, um, you know, le leads to us being, you know, tight in coverage a lot and guys making plays on the ball. So I think they work extremely hard on that. Um, I think, uh, you know, Joe and Marcus and the rest of the guys that work with the secondary, they put an emphasis on it. And I think our guys have improved uh, in that area. Can you talk about being tied for the division and how, I know every game's important, but it seems like those, those division games down the stretch are going to be extremely, extremely They'll be, they'll be extremely, extremely important if we take care of business this week against the Giants. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I think kind of in answer to your question, Ed, is like, um, yeah, the margin for error is extremely small right now, and we need to make sure we're taking advantage of every opportunity. And so we need to focus in on the Giants um, in, in trying to get a win against those guys this week. What did you see that really limited the offense's production on Sunday? Yeah, look, I think there was a number of things. Um, you know, I thought the biggest thing is I don't think we ever really, and I, th I said this last night, we never really got into a good rhythm uh, in, in the passing game. Um, look, in, in visiting with Pete, you know, there's some things that we probably uh, could have and would have done, you know, a little bit differently. Um, you know, I think particularly our drop back passing um, you know, I thought some of the things that we, we, we were able to do play action wise, um, there were some things there that, that uh, we took advantage of. I think, you know, drop back passing, um, I didn't think we were as good as we needed to be, uh, whether it be throwing it, catching it, protecting it. You know, there's a lot of factors that go involved in that, but I thought that was an area that we struggled in, yes. Was it I don't even specify a couple of the elements of it, but what happened maybe with the blocking scheme, with the play designs, I know you said their defense was really good in the past, but in what specificities did they restrain you from being able to do how you want Well, look, yeah, I mean, I think they got they got a couple of guys that, that can rush the passer, which created some challenges. We got There was a little bit of knockback at times. Um, and then I thought they had some tight coverage in some areas that we, we, didn't, get, we didn't get completions in. So... Um, and then when we did get completions underneath, I thought they did a pretty good job of coming up and making tackles. So um, we knew it was going to be a challenge trying to throw the ball against against those guys, particularly uh, with some of some of the weapons that we, you know, didn't have available to us or, or not quite at 100 percent. But um, yeah, we we um, we didn't do a good enough job in the drop back passing game, but yet um, we made enough plays to win the game. And how much 
it both pretty deep into special teams to know that when the offense is struggling like that, they, they're able to do enough and to put the team in position to score. Well, I think that's what you have to do. You know, um, you know, there's a lot of times you play games and and not all three phases are operating at, uh, you know, the level that we need them to to operate at, and so the other phases have to be able to pick up the slack and. Um, I thought defensively and, and in the kicking game, I thought we were able to do that yesterday. Go ahead, Ed. You know, I know everyone knows it's a tough league, it's a, it's a tough game, but do you think, you know, looking back on it, do you think that the, the last few months have been harder than even you would expect? Do you ever get frustrated by, by that at all? Or? Um, yeah, look, I mean, you get frustrated with not – you know, coming away with the victories that 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 gets that gets frustrating. Um, but yeah, this league is hard. And and you know, we were just talking today. I mean, I think there's 13 teams that are within one game of 500 in in our league. So almost half the league is, you know, sitting in that in that position. And that's that's the way our league is designed. That's the way our league is. And you know, we've got to find a way to to create a few more opportunities for ourselves so that we end up winning some of these games. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the difference between, you know, being a playoff team and not a playoff team. Putting aside, like, what happened after the play with McCoy and Carver, could you just kind of take us through the sack and what led to it? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we just got beat, you know. We just got beat and, and uh, you know, their guy made a nice play and um, he beat us, got back there and got a sack. So sometimes that happens. You know, but it wasn't a it wasn't a, a a missed assignment. You know, we just got beat. When you don't have Taysom, does that complicate the game plan? Because you don't have another one of those that you can just plug in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if complicate the game plan is the right word. Um, and yet, look in every in every game and every game plan you're trying to figure out ways that you can utilize your players to put yourself in the best position to have success and certainly you know Taysom's a player that we've had a lot of success with um, in the things that he can do um, and I think he puts a lot of stress on the opponent whether it be him you know as the personal protector on the punt team or whether it be him lining up uh, you know as a tight end or lining up uh, in the backfield or lining up at the quarterback position. I just think, you know, there's a lot of preparation that goes along with all of that stuff. And so um, I think when you don't have a weapon uh, like that, I think, you know, I don't, I don't know if it complicates our game plan more, but it, it simplifies their game plan a little bit more. We've seen a couple of times this season Jameis come out to do the, the kneel downs. And I believe it was earlier on in the season we saw Derek do it early on. Is, is there something that – is there like criteria that leads that – there's, there's not really anything involved in that. Yeah, I mean, we just put Jameis out there to go take those snaps. So that's all it was. Derek uh, mentioned that he had had two previous rib fractures. So I, I can't remember if ribs was ever on the injury report, but when, when did they occur and, and why was it not? Oh, um, yeah, I – I really don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, I'm going to assume that this, you know, all started back in Green Bay, um, but I, I can't give you an answer to that because I, I, I don't know the exact answer. I mean, as to what it was. I assume that means though that ribs were never something that took him out of a practice snap or or made him questionable. No, him. it's really been you know the shoulder or the concussion. Dennis, uh, Wait, go, ahead. go ahead, Ed. Go ahead. Oh, cool. Coach, it's not often you win in this league when you give up 204 yards rushing. Yeah. But, you know, how, how big a negative was that, do you think, and how fixable is it? Well, look, I, in terms of run defense, I'd say the number one thing we've got to do is we've got to do a better job in terms of space tackling. Um, you know, when, when you really look at the game, you know, there's a couple opportunities that we have a chance to get a player, whether it be the quarterback or whether it be the running back or whether it be the receiver on the reverse, that we have potential opportunities to get a guy down in space. And I think that's really where we've, you know, had our biggest issues is um, 
space tackling. Um, and so, look, we've got to continue to work on that, um, you know, where we can get guys down in a, you know, open environment and minimize gains. Um, because when you look at our run defense, you'd say there's a lot of plays that are really good. Um, and then we have, you know, a couple of plays that we, we miss a tackle in space. And those are things that become, uh, you know, explosive plays. So um, I do think that we need to be better in terms of controlling the line of scrimmage, knocking the line of scrimmage back, being able to get off blocks. Um, I think that's something that we have to uh, be better at. I think, you know, it's hard to win in our league when a team is one-dimensional, you know. So whether it be they're one-dimensional in the passing game and they're gaining a lot of passing yards and they can't run the ball, or vice versa, uh, which I think was the case uh, in the game yesterday, they were a one-dimensional team. Um, they, they, and they were able to run the ball a little bit. Uh, but I also think that's you know, difficult to score a lot of points um, just through the running game. You know, you're going to have to throw, ball, throw the ball in our league to score any significant amount of points. So is it, is it a concern? Yeah, it's a concern. We need to be better there. Um, but um, I thought overall, you know, look, they were 3.8 yards per offensive play. So, you know, overall it was, it was a pretty good defensive performance. So it's not guys get blown up up front like you. No, no. Now, can they be better there? Absolutely. You know, um, I think the longest run, I don't think we fit it up exactly how we needed to. We have an opportunity to get a guy down at about, you know, 10 or 12 yards. And you don't like that, but yet, you know, you can, you can survive. Um, but we, we've got to, we got to minimize those being, you know, um, you know, 40 or 50 yard gains. Dennis, uh, Lynn Bowden is not like a guy you look at his frame and say he's like your blocking receiver, but like yesterday you guys motioned him into the backfield and lead block on an inside run. Like, what is it that makes him capable in that arena? Yeah, I, I, look, number one is willingness. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the number one factor. Uh, in that is you got to be willing to do those things and and I think he's I think he's tough I think he's competitive I think he's willing to do whatever we ask him to do uh, you know to try to help us win so uh, and I appreciate that about him are you able to, to take us through what happened with the challenge it's hard to tell from up in the up yeah. press box. yeah so um, well a we didn't get a great view of it and I got a view of it right prior to the snap and you know I threw a freaking lob up there rather than just slamming it on the ground and and didn't get it out in time um, and it was really I, I was basing it off of one look that I got on the jumbotron what right before the snap and it looked to me like he had the ball in the left hand and it's where the ball crosses the sideline so I thought he was short um, but we really didn't have a good view upstairs and you know if I'd have done a better job of just, you know, getting it out and throwing it on the ground rather than this freaking lob I put up there, uh, we might have gotten it. While we're talking about officiating, what's the don't get me in trouble. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. All right. The what's the threshold where a rugby punter forfeits the ability to be rough? Yeah, it's kind of like the it's it's kind of like the quarterback when 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 he's on the move and. And throwing the ball, he's got the two-step protection. Uh, you know, you can't hit him in the, you know, head or neck area. Um, you know, I, I think I think we got to. I, I just I want to I want to get 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 with the league on that and and have them kind of explain to me what they saw on that play. Um, you know, you can't go in in there and just, you know. Um, the thing that I thought is I thought it was I thought it was a little I thought it was a little late I thought it was after the two steps, um, and so um, we'll get an answer from the league on on you know what what they thought. As far as like you said, all these teams are around five hundred. Have you given much thought to what it takes to to break out? That's, I don't know if that's the right term, but what it takes to elevate from that. Yeah, look, it really takes, you know. 
everybody doing their job. And it, I mean, it sounds simple. It sounds cliche. It sounds whatever you want it, whatever you want it to be. But that's really what it's about. It's about you know um, consistent execution. And um, um, because you know in our league, it's the, the the these games come down to one score. Much like mo most of the games that we've played, end up coming down to one score. And so, you know, a fundamental, a technique, a, a, you know, a play here or there makes makes the big difference. So, um, yeah, it's not some miraculous formula that that you know kind of puts you over the top. It's really just you know coaches, players, everybody doing their job at at uh, at the level that it's needed to be done at. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know that I see any, anything that, you know, um, uh, of significance that, you know, that we're seeing the same plays over and over. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think I'm seeing a, a, a lot of that. And yet, and yet it's pretty standard in our league in terms of, you know, the run game, you know, they're going to. Uh, we got a lot of the, you know, stretch zone running game, you know, crunch as we call it because they brought the tight end back to seal the edge, you know. So that was a big part of what their running game was, you know, this week. And we've seen that play throughout the course of the season. Um, it's pretty standard in our league. Has that play worked a lot against your defense or is it kind of just a toss-up between the instances? Um, well, I think there's been some times that it's it's been a good play, and sometimes that it hadn't been a good play. Did, did you go back? And one time for one more. Did you go back and review to see if, if you think you would have won that challenge? I think I would have won it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think I would have won it. I think it was about half a yard short. So we'd have then had to, you know, defend a what was it fourth down, right? So, which we were, you know, I would have taken my chances. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.